The other big change here with the PPO is there is an out-of-network benefit. There is an out-of-network benefit. Remember, with the HMO, if you go to a doctor that's not in their network, you're cooked, right? You're paying for everything. But in the PPO, if you go to a doctor who's not in their network, they will pay something, right? Usually, the way it works is, um, let's try this one. Usually, the way it works is, there's a $500 deductible, and they pay 70% of the cost over the 500, okay? So they're making you eat the $500, and they're, they're punishing you, see, for not using one of their doctors. And they're also making you co-insure 30% of the cost of the 500, right? So um, this plan has worked well. Now these plans are not cheap, but they have worked pretty well. So, so far our two managed care plans that we talked about, HMO and the PPO, okay? And you see the differences between the two of them, right? You referral here, you don't hear. Low copay there, higher copay there. Both doctors are signing a contract. Both doctors are paying, getting paid a compensation. Aren't there more doctors in the PPO than the HMO too? I would think so. Because they're getting paid more. I would think that's probably true. Yeah. There's the hospital network too. Well, usually the hospital networks. Um, usually the hospitals are in everybody's network today. Today, not initially. Initially, some hospitals were in, some aren't. But generally, what I see today, most hospitals are in everybody's network. There is an exception, Reading Hospital, for some reason. I don't know if anybody ever goes to there as a health insurance, but they seem to be, uh, oh, we're not, 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 we're, they seem to be like that. I might just be because there's fewer hospitals in Reading, I don't know. But generally, the hospitals seem to be in all these networks. Okay, okay, we talked about the first two, and now we're gonna talk about the next one. All right, so I'll get rid of this. <clears throat> the next type of plan we're gonna talk about is called a point of service plan, P-O-S. <laughs> okay, I don't know, is this so three or four? Four. No, four. four. <laughs> Points. Um, OS. Now, the point of service plan is growing very popular. It combines an HMO and a PPO. Okay? So with a POS plan, you have a choice. You can go, you pick up Family Doc, and you can go to the HMO with a low copay. family doctor. Okay? You can say, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to use my family doctor, low copay, go on there. I don't need a specialist, I'm good. Or you can use the PPO option. And if you want, go to a specialist if you want. specialist you don't want to get, have to get a referral so you just go right to them right another interesting thing about the POS plan is the 
primary care physician, this is the family doctor, can give referrals to doctors who are out of network. So the POS plan combines the features of HMO with the PPO and lets you make the decision at the point of service, that is when you need service, what you want, what you want to do. Um, when the primary care gives a referral for a doctor out of network, does that make that doctor covered yeah. under this insurance? Okay, so it like kind of brings them into network. Well, as far as the patient's concerned, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, good. Does anybody have any questions on any of those plans? Three of these, the HMO, the PPO, and the POS are all managed care plans. Okay, things went along for a little while, okay. So why wouldn't you pick point of service all the time? Is it more expensive? Because I mean that's like being about the both worlds. It's like yeah. I mean it's gotta be like a super high monthly fee. <laughs> I, I really don't know. I I know they're gaining in popularity. They're, those plans are gaining in popularity now. And also, it depends on what your employer really offers you, too. So you might not even have that. That's offer. true. It's very true. I don't think I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It depends on whether you're. The next thing that came along were health savings accounts. Consumer-driven health plans, these are called. Consumer-driven health plans. They're also called high-deductible plans. Is this number five or no? No, this is a new, a new category. A new category of plan. It's not, a, it's not really a managed care plan in the usual sense. Passed by Congress in 2003, so let's say started in 2003. High deductible insurance plan is designed to force the consumer to make good decisions. In other words, if your copay is two dollars, ten dollars, even twenty-five dollars, you know your focus isn't on the cost of what's being done, right? You pay your 25 bucks or your $30, you're, you're generally done under one of those plans once you pay the copay. They can send you for x-rays, blood work, see a specialist, all the, the cost can really mount up. But you're not, for one thing, you're not visible to that. You know? you, you're not seeing those numbers. And the other thing is, honestly, do you really care? I mean, come on, you pay your 30 bucks, you're done. I mean, that's traditionally what Americans do. The whole philosophy of the health savings accounts, the large deductible plans, is let's force the consumer to manage health care himself or herself like she was buying a car. You know? When people buy a car, what do they do? They shop around, right? Who's got the best offer? Or if you're buying a sofa or a washing machine, who's got the best, right? Who's got the best offer? Who's offering it on sale? Nobody does that with healthcare. So the whole philosophy here was, let's make the consumer more involved in the purchase decision. Um, and to do that, they set up tax-favored custodial accounts. Okay. To 
pay medical expenses. Under these plans, the individual deductible has to at least be $1,000. Family deductible has to be at least two thousand dollars. And many of these plans have higher deductibles than that. Five thousand. I had a student last semester, seven thousand five hundred dollars. Jeez, crackers. Right? You'd never want to get sick. I mean you'd have to mortgage your house to go to the hospital, right? So, you know, these you know, the thought was good, but I don't know. There's a lot of problems with this. Well, there's not hardly any preventive care. That's the problem. So people <clears throat> just go to the emergency room all the time or whatever. Yes. Do all have to use a high, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. high savings accounts? Yes, health savings accounts, high deductible plans, high deductible health plans. Okay? What are the guys that What are the guys that You'll say. We're going to talk about two plans. There's two types of health savings accounts. The first one is just called the HSA, just, just the health savings account. is a low premium the employer and the health insurer in other words their intent is to charge people a low premium they're trying to get people to go into the plan so there's so when, when, when they do that they say listen we know you love the PPO but how about this isn't this interesting you'll pay a low premium right so they said we're going to charge a low premium to the employee for this health savings account. Right? We're talking about a health savings account now. Yeah, by payroll deduction. You know, health insurance is usually a payroll deduction. And usually what the employer tells the employees is this option for you is going to be a low deduction from your payroll. Now, the employer usually contributes to the deductible. The employer usually contributes some cash to the deductible. Now, where I worked, what we said, we were trying to then send people in to join this plan. We said, you know what? If you're an individual, there's a thousand dollar deductible, but we will put in 500 bucks. We'll put in 500 bucks. So whenever you go to the doctor and you use a debit card, you've got $500 in that account. Every time you go to the doctor, you swipe it, the chain gets a little smaller each time. But there's 500 bucks in there, right? And if you're enrolled as a family, we'll put in a thousand bucks. Even with this, we couldn't get people to join. So the employer contributes some cash, and the employee is invited to contribute some cash towards the deductible. Very few actually do, I don't know why. But the employee can contribute 